Oh, I did not see you there. I was just rereading this book and reminding myself of some of the nuggets of wisdom that are in here. One of Diane's quotes truly says it all. The secret to life and to everything is to own it, to own your life and to be responsible. Amen to that. It truly is up to each and every one of us to be empowered in this way. And this could not be a more appropriate theme to discuss since it's career month here at LinkedIn, where we're focusing on helping you to do just that, to own your career transformation. See what I just did there? <laughs> we are so lucky to get to hear from not just one, but two incredibly impressive women who've each had their own transformational careers where they have truly owned it. I'm Rochelle Diamond. I'm on our employee experience team, and I have the privilege of running our LinkedIn speaker series, which is all about bringing in inspiring ideas and diverse, innovative thinkers to make you more productive and successful. So welcome. Welcome to this special career month speaker series with Diane von Furstenberg and Gabby Harada. Diane is a fashion designer, a philanthropist, and the founder and chairwoman of the company that bears her name, DVF. In 1974, she created the iconic wrap dress, which became a symbol of power and independence for women and grew into a global brand. She's been a champion of women her entire life, supporting and empowering emerging women leaders across the globe. And get this, two years ago, she was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame, honored for her leadership and achievements, which have changed the course of history. Her story, should be her story. <laughs> anyway, um, we're also so thrilled <clears throat> that Gabby Harada, president and CEO of DVF, is joining us today as well. Originally from Beijing, she moved to the US for college, where she double majored in art history and Japanese. And since then, her career in the fashion industry has spanned roles with Anna Sui, Ralph Lauren, and ADM. It's a New York-based Japanese luxury brand that she scaled from a small operation in New York to multiple global businesses. And after four years there, she became the chief strategy officer at Jill Stewart and led the brand to profitability through Japanese licensing and restructuring. She is now the president at DVF where after a year long process to reset the company, she has streamlined it into a nimble, digital and profitable business. Her focus is now on drawing the blueprint <clears throat> for the next 10 years to amplify Diane's legacy and to make the DVF company the most admired company in the world. Really looking forward to hearing from both of these impressive women. And to add even more excitement to this event, our amazing VP of content, media, and experiences, Catherine Fisher is here as our fabulous hostess with the mostest today. So let's get ready to be inspired by these three fabulous women and learn lessons on how you can transform your own career direct tra trajectory, <clears throat> excuse me, and truly own it. <laughs> so let's give a huge round of applause and a warm welcome to Diane von Furstenberg, Gabby Harada, and Katherine Fisher. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you, Gabby and Diane, for joining us. You know, we've been working with Diane um, back in 2017 when you joined us as an influencer. We partnered with you on In Charge, which is really about being in charge of yourself and, and your life. And I, you know, one of my really my career highlights was being able to work with you because you are such an empowerment for women and really owning it. Um, so thank you so much for being here. And Gabby, it was amazing to meet you and can't wait to have this conversation. I'm going to start with something we love to do, which is rapid fire questions. So I'll start with Diane and then go to you, Gabby. So Diane, can you please tell us what your first job was? Oh, that's a long time ago. <clears throat> uh, my first job, I was a receptionist. I thought I wanted to go into the fashion business, but I didn't know really how to start. And I became a receptionist 
of a photographer's agent. <clears throat> it was in Paris. He was the biggest photographer's agent. He represented all the most glamorous photographers. And I was just there answering the phone. But the people that I met was quite incredible. I, uh, I, you know, I discovered the image of fashion, the advertising agency, the, uh, the shoots, the models, the photographers, the makeup artists, the copy, all of the things that dealt with the image. That was my first job. Love that. Gabby, how about you? What was your first job? Well, my first job, which is from 12 years ago, a real full-time job after you know, a couple of internships in New York City, the fashion industry, is a production assistant manager with Ralph Lauren, supply chain, global sourcing, product development. Uh, that was when I met Ralph Lauren, Mr. Lauren, for the first time in the elevator, and uh, I did my little elevator pitch where I said to him, Mr. Lauren, I'm your only Chinese employees from China in New York City. My dream is to bring American legacy brand to great success, great fame in the world, but especially in China where I'm from. Uh, and 12 years later, that's exactly what I'm doing at another American legacy brand, DBF. Well, I think you're in the right job, Gabby. Okay, switching gears. Diane, what TV show are you watching right now? Oh, oh last night I tried to watch this Korean show that everybody Squid is Games? talking about. Yes. <gasps> yes. Yes. Love it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, disturbing. Violent, so it's incredibly well done, but it's a little violent for me, so I think I've had it. <laughs> Gabby, how about you? Uh, succession. I'm rewatching Succession season one and two in preparation for season three. Another another great one. Okay, Diane. Um, other than DBF, what is one of your favorite brands? Oh, I like you know very. Um, I think the only brands that I really buy from is Hermes and maybe for my swimwear, Hermes. Those are my brands. Great. Gabby? I'm going to give you an answer that's not for, uh, that's not fashion industry. My favorite brand in the world is Disney. Oh, yes. That's, Actually, that's a beloved brand for me. Actually, I should have said that Apple is my favorite brand. <laughs> but Hermes is and, uh, and it has to I mean I like brands that um, stands for something that are very that have been innovative and they stand for something and they stuck and they stick to the same thing Wonderful. Okay, so the last question of our rapid fire, which I think everyone is dying to know, is really what is your work from home attire? Are you, you know, fancy on the top, comfy on the bottom, or fancy oh, all over? <laughs> Diane, I think I know your answer, but would love to hear it from you. No, I am pretty, I'm, I'm you know, I am the most consistent dresser and have been forever. I mean, my award is my archives. I wear the same thing over, over and over and over. Um, I, I live in the country, so obviously I go on long walks. So I wear pants and hiking boots and sweaters. And, uh, and then, of course, when I am doing my Zoom, I will wear a very pretty dress or very pretty top and at night when I have people for for dinner I will wear uh, you know the same thing a very DVF pajama pant and and a beautiful tunic great Gabby I have like two different zoom outfits one for normal working from home situation one for zooming with Diane 
because Sumi will be dying <laughs> just as when you meet her in person, she's going to have you walk back and forth, turn, and to check your whole outfit, check if the outfit is comfortable, check the fit, check the fabric. So I can't get away with wearing a deviant top and my workout pants, which is what I do almost every day at home. <laughs> if I'm Zoom with Diane on the day, I wear the full outfit. I love that, man. I wish, I think probably everyone here what would love to be you? able to go to what the about office. You? What about I, so you? So I personally, I wear nice on the top, comfy on the bottom. So I have to admit I'm wearing your beautiful dress and I, I have comfortable shoes on. I, it's just what I do. Uh, but when I go into the office, cause I commute, I tend to wear more um, sneakers and then try to dress up. Uh, but I, I love that white sneakers are still in. All right, let's um, move into questions about the book Own It, which I'm very excited about. Um, so your recent book, Diane, um, really highlights that uh, Diane, you as a person and also the brand is about, um, you know, owning it. And you say that the first and most important relationship is with ourselves. And once we have that, every other relationship is a plus and not a minus. So this is such an important well, and not I think minus. not not a minus is a plus and not a must. Very different. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Very okay? different. Okay. So the, the most important relationship in life is the one we have with ourselves. Once we have that, any other relationship is a plus, a luxury, and not a must. I don't like to be needy, and I don't think any woman should be needy. Yes, great. And then, and how would you describe the relationship that you have with yourself? Oh my God, I think I have, I truly have an incredible relationship with myself. I, uh, it started really, really, really early as a child. I was, um, I think it started, my mother had a big vanity in her room, a big mirror. And I used to stare at myself in the mirror for hours. Not that I liked the way I looked, because I had dark curly hair when everyone in my school in Belgium had blonde blonde hair with a, a bang. But what I realized in the mirror is that I had control over myself. If I did this, the mirror would do that. If I smiled, the mirror would smile. And so that's when I realized that I had control over me. And that gave me a great deal of strength, still does. I don't, but I, in order to have a good relationship with yourself, you also have to be strict with yourself. You can't be delusional. You cannot lie. You really have to see things the way they are. You have to own it. But um, over the years, now I'm an old lady, and uh, my relationship with me has grown and grown. And, and, you know, there's all kinds of little secrets and all kinds of little satisfaction that I couldn't share with anyone because they wouldn't mean any anything to others. So I do really believe that the lesson number one in life is to have a good relationship with yourself. Great. Wonderful. I'm going to switch gears and talk about risk taking. And I'd love to start with you, Gabby. So both of you have taken big risks. Um, you've taken risks in terms of, you know, you know, really revamping the the brand and, you know, Diane, with the relationship that you have with Gabby, I love that story of how you met and, and the really the, the relationship that you formed in there. And I'd love to hear more just how your approach is to risk taking and how do you feel confident with some of these decisions you have to make, Gabby? I have to admit, sometimes it feels really scary to make a very risky move. And I would consider when Diane and I met um, last year, January last year, and we started really having conversations in a very intimate way in March, that was a very scary time when COVID just hit you know, United States, all the brands are shutting their doors, 
closing the stores and for Diane and the board and her family to really rethink and plan for different scenarios, different future for the company. For me, who just joined this company, don't forget to raise my hand and tell Diane that, oh, I have a plan, I have an idea for this business, this brand. That was so risky in a scary way because no one would think that a new a, a, a new employees uh, who just joined the company would uh, would dare to talk to the founder and the board about the plan, but somehow it was not scary because that's something that I genuinely feel that I'm passionate about. I genuinely think that's a good smart plan. I genuinely see as clearly as as if it's right now the future of this brand five to ten years from today. So when you truly believe in what you see in that future, there's nothing to prevent you from taking that risk. It's not risky because I just know it's going to happen. Well, you sound incredibly confident, and that just shows that you know you. It was it felt risky maybe at first, but you thought through it so much. And I'd love to hear from you, Diane, in terms of what advice would you give to people in terms of how much how they should approach risk in both their personal and professional lives. All right. So first of all, I was raised by a mother who never told me be careful. Okay. She told me that fear was not an option. So I was never, I was never allowed to be afraid, to complain, or to blame. So all the responsibilities always had to be and always were on me. So when I first started, I didn't have anything to risk because I didn't have anything, right? I started, I had an idea, I went to work for a, a print manufacturer who also had invented this wonderful little jersey fabric. I never thought that what I learned there would lead me anywhere. But after my, I went to America to visit my boyfriend, and when I went back, to the factory, I really wanted to see how am I going to go back to America. And I looked at the factory and I looked at what they had and I thought, ooh, maybe there's something I could do here. And I started making little dresses with the fabric that I found there. So I had nothing to lose. After that, of course, I became very, very, very successful, very, very, very young. And risk after, you know, risk come when you have more to lose. But the most important, the only, the only advice I can give anyone is to own it. Uh, look at the situation evaluate the situation do not be afraid of showing the vulnerability do not be afraid not try to hide something that is bad just own it announce it and deal with it be true to yourself to be true to ourselves is the only thing that can allow us because you see if you own your vulnerability the minute you announce it, you could turn it into strength. You you own your your you own them. They become assets because at the end, it's all about being who you are: the good, the bad, the indifferent. But the more you are who you are, the more confident you are, and then you can handle anything. But well, and the, it, best, yeah. the best advice that I receive from anyone, and I think it's really important, is that we have no power of, uh, uh, over our destiny, but we have 100% power over our character. All right? We, our character, 
we can lose our health, we can lose our wealth, we can lose our family, we can lose our, our, our health, we can lose our freedom, but we never lose our freedom, even under torture. And therefore, the character becomes this strong little house inside of ourselves that is allowing us to be us. Beautiful. Well, and if you fast forward today, when you look at the, the, the company that you've built, and I love the story, as I mentioned, of, of you and Gabby, and really, you know, the, you put the company in the hands of, of Gabby, and I would love to hear more about that relationship yes. um, for the yes. people tuning in today. I, I, I think this is very interesting, and this was, in a sense, taking a risk, and I think it's good. Um, I met Gabby. I almost didn't meet her because the company there was a <laughs> lot of people in the company, and she was hired to manage a Asian business. So I could have met her, or I could have not met her, but I did meet her. And then there was this fashion week in January 1920 uh, or February, and. Uh, and uh, uh, COVID had already started in China, not here yet. And they were all, Fashion Week was going to be any time in New York. And there was all these famous fashion influencers that were in New York at the time. And Gabby came in my office and she said, I would like to do a live stream, invite all these influence, Chinese influencers who are here, who are very worried about what is happening in China. And maybe we can have a tea, and maybe we could create a t-shirt or something that we could sell and that we could benefit them and whatever. And she said yes. And so here we were in this, in my office, and we were maybe 15 women. And as when women usually get together, we become very intimate and we talk and we talk about difficulties and all of that. And I asked the video, everything was being video, but the video woman come and sit with us. And we, we talked and, uh, and it was very successful. The whole thing went viral. And, um, but the most important thing is not that it was successful and that it went viral is that I noticed Gabby. And I noticed that young girl and I said, she's smart, she's very smart. So then it was a very difficult time for every everything. The whole world stopped, people were furloughing everybody and it was really hard. I had to keep Gabby uh, working because I needed her, my biggest client, my biggest um, wholesaler is, is in China. We have a big business there. My factories are there. And so I needed Gabby to be there and to talk every day to those people. And that's how I developed a relationship with her. And, and then I realized that Gabby, she, she was, she's 31. She's a visionary. She focuses on intention. She visualizes, she doesn't think short term, she thinks long term. And she focuses on the intention. And I do Tai Chi and my Tai Chi master told me, focus on the intention. Don't focus on power, get hurt. Don't focus on the energy because you progressed in it. But if you focus on the intention, you get the power and the energy. And so I watched Gabby and very quickly, I understood that Gabby is a very, very special person. And she talked to me and she said, you know, I see DVF as Disney. I just <laughs> finished reading Bob Iger's book and I want to be Bob Iger for DVF. And 
that took me by surprise. I said, really? I mean, what do you mean? Anyway, and so obviously we talked every day and she impressed me. And at some point I said to her, Gabby, I want you to, in a new moment of my, of my career, DVF has had a long life. It, first it was American Dream. Then I sold the company. They destroyed it. Then it was come back in. Then they tried to expand it too big, and I went through other difficulty. So we had to shrink again so that we can continue. I said, Gabby, I want you to run the company for the future. And she said, she, she, I mean, she didn't look at me because we were on the phone. She said to me, but I'm only, I'm so young and I'm not white, I'm Chinese. And I said, well, guess what? That's precisely why I want you to do this. And that's what happened. Incredible story. And, you know, what really strikes me is that you've been in the business, Diane, for over 40 years. And Gabby, you're not even 40 yet. And can you tell us, Gabby, you know, what was what what did went through your head when you were having those conversations? Um, you really lit up when you were talking about risk taking. And and you also mentioned that Disney is your favorite brand. So can you give us a little bit more, a peek behind the curtains in terms of what that experience was like? I was actually so mesmerized, just as I was telling the story, even though I experienced that story myself personally last year, because it's so incredible. You know, I often think about my time spent with Diane and every day it's, it's life changing. It's really conditioning me to be, to understand the importance of authenticity. So for me to really blurb it out for every, for anyone who is offered top job of, of the, the company, it's, it's the first reaction probably shouldn't be, Oh, I'm, are you sure I, I may not be the best choice. It came out of me because she has really empowered me through the every day, every hour talking to each other to be very authentic, authentic. And it was an authentic insecurity I had last year, um, May last year, because I look around, I don't see a female Chinese young CEO, right? I just don't see it because I don't see it. I had a little doubt about my background, my gender, and my age. But when Diane said, because you are all of that, I want you to be CEO of my company, that moment is just life-changing. Now I feel I evolved so much from that moment. Now I look at our team, look at what we have done in the past 12 to 16 months, the new develop.com, really a more targeted effort on the product, on the develop dresses, the way of sweaters to really go back to the core, to think about putting women before fashion, to really almost on purpose shrink our business to the one thing and the one thing only, which is empower and support and allow women around the world to become the woman they want to be. So I want to replicate my experience of the past 12 months with Diane replicate that experience for all the women around the world. So everyone can have this acceleration of growth and truly becoming as I became the woman I wanted to be 12 years ago when I said to Miss Lauren in the elevator. Well, thank you for that, your authenticity here. Um, we talk a lot about that at LinkedIn is how important it is to bring your authentic self. And I think your story, um, I'm sure really hit a chord with many. And Diane, you've always been such an advocate for women. I, I believe in not to, I think that what you have said is that you live like in a, like a man, but in, in a, a woman's body. Um, and, and you, is, did I say that right? Um, well, I always just... want to have a man's life in a woman's body, which means 
I wanted to have the freedom of a man and being able to pay the bills and being able to travel, being able to do whatever I wanted to do. But I didn't want to give up being a woman, which is all the great advantages. And what do you think has changed culturally uh, in terms of women and, and the workforce recently, Diane? Can you, any, any thoughts there that you could share with us? Any changes, shifts? Oh, yes. And it goes, you know, the woman thing goes back and forth. You know, you make us, you make progress and then, and then we have to, women have to be always very careful. You know, women are used to manage things in a different way. Women have their menstruation every month. I don't know that men could do that. You know, men, women have to deal with a lot of things all at once. So uh, I think it's important that we, uh, we are respected, that we handle it, go for it, that we respect men as they should respect us. I think it's important in a strange way to get the female energy out of men and the masculine energy out of women. And then we have the perfect world. Do you feel like we're closing in on equality? Uh, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Uh, I think that what we have to focus right now, what is the most important for us to focus is the human side of people. I think that we are right now living in this country and in the world in a very conflictual moment. And it is true that television, social media, all of that conflict attract ratings. So it's just a fact, you know, people like to see people fight. So if that is the case, I think that it is very important for each individual, each one of us to make a consistent effort in bringing the humanity out of everyone. We certainly cannot agree on everything. But let us just make an effort every day in a daily base, instead of dealing with a conflict in trying to look for the thing that makes us the same. And um, so I do want to just point out, Gabby, lots of comments um, going on the stream in terms of how inspired they are by your story. Um, and it really, and, and so thank you again for, for being honest with that experience. And I will say, you know, Diane, you're, you're considered an icon and you're someone that so many people look up to and you've, you've really owned it. You've been in charge of your life. And Gabby, the story that you shared um, is, is pretty phenomenal. And do you feel like this, like how, how many people could also have these experiences? And what would you tell to someone who, if they wanted to, you know, at the age of 31, you know, share, share a business proposal to an icon in the industry? And um, what, what would you tell them? Like, how, how would you overcome that fear and own it? Forget about age 31. You can do that at 21 years old if you fundamentally know one thing, which is who you want to be. I think that's probably the most important element for you know students or the graduates as they start navigating um, their career path is you want to be spending so much time reflecting and thinking about who you are and what, who you want to be, what's your core competence. So you see, even though I didn't meet, I didn't meet Diane 12, just 12 years ago, I intuitively knew that 
what I thought, what would seem to be a weakness with the Chinese background could also be strength because no one else either speak Chinese or know the market or know the culture very well. So intuitively, I, w- I immediately would be, oh, I'm Chinese, what I can do that no one else can do within the fashion industry. So even though my experience, our experience, me and Diane, is such a special, such a blessing situation and experience for me, I truly believe by concentrating and thinking on your core competence, who you want to be, anyone, regardless of age, background, gender, the industry, anyone can have similar, if not more perfect experience like what I had, what I'm, what I'm having at BBF. The most important thing is that it's not just focus on the woman you want to be, because that's one thing. But what is really important is that you every day you make an inventory of who you are. So when I say own your imperfection, they become your asset. You have to own it. Okay, these are the things I cannot do. These are the things I can do. Where is it that I can use what I can do? And the other trick that I want to give all of you is a very good trick. If you go for an interview or if you're trying to sell something, remember first, try to think, put yourself in the, in the, in the place of the other and think, okay, they must think I am young or they must think I don't have that. And the best trick is you bring up front the negative mm-hmm. that they may have about you. Because that way, if you bring it first, you immediately neutralize it. That's another very good trip. This little book, by the way, that I wrote during COVID is full of, of, I won't even call them advice. I would call them tricks. They are tricks how to be confident, tricks how to own it, tricks how to be the best of who you are. But most important, be who you are. Do not lie to yourself. Lying to yourself, you won't make it. Um, So totally switching gears here. Uh, There's been some questions, Gabby, about the beautiful artwork behind you. Uh, Is that a Power Ranger? I, I'm going to yes. have to answer that. I'm going to have to answer that. It's a very talented Greek man. It's a Greek uh, artist who gave it to me. And I put it in Gabby's uh, office because it's about strength and it's about power. I love it. And who, who is the artist? Oh, I forgot his name. I shouldn't forget his name, but I forgot. Is there a name okay. under below? Gabby Turneron, is there a name? Obviously, it's with a K. It's very but... difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult to decipher. But yeah. well, <laughs> I'll we'll find out. Okay, and last question for you, um, from me, is... If you look past at this last two years, and, and I think I may know the answer, can you both share with us what silver lining came out of the last two years for you? Diane, I'll start with you. Oh, you know, I am, I was trained by my mother to no matter what happens to you, you have to look the lining. So it's such a habit in 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 the way I am that I can't think any other way. Obviously, the confinement allowed me to be more at home. I love nature. So the two things that happened, I got closer to nature, but I also got closer to the virtual. Uh, I read a lot. Uh, it was an opportunity to 
take the business in a place that I didn't like where it was going. It was spreading too thin. It was too big. And I wanted to go back to the core. And uh, so we did that. And then Gabby, I mean, my, my encounter to Gabby was, was a gift. It was a big gift for me. And because it was a gift for me, I was able to turn it into a huge opportunity and gift for her. And Gabby, your silver lining, other than getting your I'm dream job. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Diane, for saying that. We don't often do this, you know, um, talking about the type of thing we spend a lot of time talking about the product, the fabric, the, the business, the future, the team. So this is really, if you ask me silver lining, it's the opportunity to express my gratitude to you, Diane DBF. It's a, it's a, not blessing, it's a destiny. That's how I feel. It's a destiny, the past year and a half, two years of what have happened, what I walk into, the trust, the trust that I have received from someone so big, so important um, in the whole world. That is the, the really the summary of the past year and a half, two years. I'm so grateful at the same time I'm so conscious of what happened in this world and what COVID did to so many people, so many countries. So I constantly think about with everything I have received, with everything that we, the company has received, love, admiration from our customers, new customers, how do we give back to help other people who are impacted in a negative way by COVID? So it's a very complicated silver lining and the, you know, the, the, the negative um, impact of COVID that defined the past two years at this point almost. Beautifully said, and I think is uh, a perfect place to, to end our story here. Um, really appreciate again, the authenticity, um, the wonderful, uh, you know, insight and peek inside. And I think it is clear, Diane, that you found amazing talent with Gabby. And the stream was is lighting up just in terms of how inspired they were by the story and how appreciative they were of, of this time with you. So everyone well, is giving you a I would like to, I would like to take advantage of this moment to also talk about LinkedIn. Okay? LinkedIn is also a product of this time. LinkedIn is an amazing network where smart people can communicate, can get inspired, can find jobs and opportunities. Mm -hmm. I mean, LinkedIn is a very, very serious, effective, miraculous um, network. And so I thank you. I know that a lot of people find jobs, a lot of people find opportunities, and therefore LinkedIn, you really do have a reason to exist, and I thank you for it. Well, on behalf of all the employees, thank you for saying those words. We're a mission-driven company. Every single employee here is very devoted to our members and making sure that the experiences that we're able to provide help them be more productive and successful and really creating economic opportunity for every member of the workforce. So thank you, Diane, for acknowledging that. Um, and thank you everyone for tuning in. We'll see you at the next LinkedIn speaker series. This will be available on demand. And uh, with that, we hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.